If we look at these three structures, they all have one thing in common. No, it's not the location. As you can see, one's in India, the other one's in New York. And it's not a good thing for them to be associated with each other. They've all overlooked one critical design aspect that costs these projects tens of millions of dollars. So if you stick around to the end, you'll find out what was overlooked and how you can potentially prevent it in your own projects. In May 2025, an almost finished six lane highway in Kerala, India suddenly collapsed, trapping cars and injuring many others. So let's break down what the investigators found when they got there. They got to what appeared to be a classic bearing failure. See, first up, there was a heavy earthen embankment sitting on pre-monsoon soaked paddy fields. It has extremely low STP values, even at three meters deep of less than five. They had done no earthen rectification works on the site. When the labs tested the soil, they found it had an undrained shear strength of less than 25 kPa, when it actually needed more than 50. So now if we took out the weight of the field that was on top of it, which was roughly 19 kPa, that's seven meters high, we can see that works out roughly to 130 kPa. So if we run through the numbers, we can see that we're getting really low STB values. And then with drains blocking up, making the ground even wetter. Saturated ground is one of the worst things that you can do to any foundations. And any good foundation guys will have you drain the area around you to make sure you're maintaining that soil. We can all equate that back to a roughly factor of 70 kPa bearing capacity that they could have possibly achieved when the load was over 130 kPa. And if you look at the Indian codes, this type of factor of safety would roughly need to be roughly two and a half. We're lucky to even be one at this point. So it clearly shows that if you ignore the geotech advice it can lead to catastrophe this site with proper groundworks and proper setup wouldn't have had a problem but you can see how much needed to go wrong before they actually saw a failure so not only were they under designed at the start with but they also needed to see pre-soaked grounds that needed ground repair then clogged drains making it worse raising up that water table level creating what little strength was left in the soil to disappear. Now let's move across to New York and it doesn't actually need a failure for the project to have gone sideways. Even just bad press can make it hard to sell at the price that you're looking for. And this is where one C port towers lean comes into play. And when you look at the research, quite a lot of the buildings actually lean around this area, but being the height it is, it can cause significant problems. We have seen other tales lean in the past, and I've actually done a video, which I'll have linked in the below description, but this one is quite recent. And through the many stories going backwards and forwards, it means the project has led to a halt. And this is a spite many engineers actually claiming and reviewing and showing that the building is likely not to topple and that lean is really unperceptible to the height. Over the height of it, it's only really moved 200 millimeters. So you couldn't tell unless you're actually trying to look up and see how it's behaving. But what could happen is some of the windows could become unoperational because of the lean causing additional transfer of load through the structure. So even despite it being unperceptible for the people that are up there, just trying to sell it because of the story of what's actually happened makes it harder. This is why you do need to treat soil and soil conditions with great respect because even just a little bit of movement can cause a lot of disruptions and harm to your building despite it not being unsafe. So they tried to do ground repair works but clearly something might not have gone wrong or not realizing that the smaller buildings around them had actually moved as well. Where if you go down onto deeper foundations, yes, it does cost a fair bit more, but you're more likely to have a stable building sitting on solid ground. Now there was some corrective work and you do need to be careful on building leans. It's not just the foundations, because sometimes even the core and offset loads can cause the building to lean sideways. And with corrective actions, you can actually build the building back up to straight. However, if it keeps moving, you have the potential to overcorrect or undercorrect, as it's potentially really hard to guess. This is why you don't really want to be judging on your soil conditions for behavior, because there's so many uncertainties for you to predict it. With the concrete structure, you roughly know how it's going to behave. With soil, there's so many different factors that can cause different actions and behavior. So the building was actually sitting on reclaimed land. So it means that the soil wasn't actually natural soil there, but it was reclaimed land to build up in that area. And there was other buildings of lower height sitting on that same soil without any problem. Although I did tell you that they are leaning a little bit, but being of lower height, people weren't so concerned. There were actually some reports of showing that there may have been differential settlement warnings that they could have taken into consideration to spend more money on foundations. But who really wants to spend more money than they need to? So they went with the cheaper option. However, as you can see with hindsight, 
the deeper foundations would have been a safer option underneath this situation. As differential settlement is really hard to predict, meaning that if you are relying on it to behave correctly, you need to make sure that you've spent a lot of time and effort in the ground repair work and setting up your foundation to be on solid mat material and making sure that your foundations have been properly designed, especially in these situations, by a proper geotechnical engineer. So what is differential settlement? It means that when one side slightly deflects more than the other, and this can either be to higher loads, which is probably the one of the most obvious signs, but it could also be to soil conditions that this bearing capacity has slightly less than the other side, as all soil bearing capacities is based on a settlement reaction. So if you get anything other than on piles, so you're getting it on soft soil, you're expecting some level of settlement in that foundation material. And if you do have a slight variation from the left to the right, it means that you can get a differential movement in that building just due to soil conditions. That's why it can make it very hard on the bigger high-rise buildings not to go down on the bedrock, but reliant on the soft material below, where a little bit of rotation at a high height can lead to large magnifications of movement. Now let's move back to India. Now this just happens to be a really good tale about a different type of failure that you may not have thought about. Now with today's age, the weather extremes are changing a lot. And these weather extremes can cause big differential behavior that may need to look at existing infrastructure for the situation that it's in, or maybe even just proper maintenance. In Mumbai, on Malabar Hill, after a late night of record rain, a century old retaining wall had collapsed, unleashing a landslide that forced families from their homes and the wall that was never designed for today's extreme rainfalls. The ground had been additionally weakened by tree roots that had grown around the retaining wall, and there was also some unsanctioned modifications making it worse. With most of the stuff, it's normally not just one thing that leads to a failure. You normally need a series of failures for something to actually be catastrophic. That's why we have factors of safety, because all this stuff is really hard to maintain, especially over a long period of time. And those modifications apparently led to the drains being blocked. And when you block drains, what actually happens? You get buildup of hydrostatic pressure, and you also get reduction in soil strength through saturation of the soils. So what was the key here? This was a retaining wall that had survived over a hundred years. So surely it had built the test of time. It was actually a really big downfall of 150 millimeters of rain in a 24 hour period. Gravity wall that was over about 1.5 meters wide and upwards of eight meters tall. So it was quite a big retaining wall. However, it was sitting on shallow unreinforced foundation systems. Some of the key aspects of that wall, it had no weep holes. So what is a weep hole? A weep hole is a hole in the retaining wall allowing water to seep out when water gets backed up. The drains were backed up and that leads to a rising of the hydrostatic pressure on the wall. That hydrostatic pressure is additional weight that wall needs to resist. Actually further weakens the ground as the retaining wall builds up, you get a hydrostatic pressure. It also weakens the soil behind it, increasing the active pressure that is pushing on that wall. So there's a lack of just relying on the gravity soil no proper drainage, no proper anchors, no deep anchors going through into the foundation past the saturated soil, meaning that it could actually hold itself into place. The rising hydrostatic pressure and the reduction in the shear strength in the soil led to an increased load on the building that led to the blowout to occur. So even with stuff that is standard the test of time, you do need to make sure you have proper maintenance and actually really looking back to see whether it's actually built for the current conditions. So as we can see here through the calculation from MathJot, seeing the rising pressure reduction in KA leads to a bigger sliding force on the side of that wall. And a lot of these things can just be easily checked through some simple formulas that run through with MathJot. So if we're looking at Rankin's formula, where we have the pressure of the soil behind it, with the weight of the gravity retaining wall that was being designed for, we can quickly do equilibrium checks to see whether the wall was sufficient or not, leading to the failure that we can see today. So let's move across the UK now, as it's not just the US and India where you see these problems. And we're moving down into Nottingham, where there was this old Victorian retaining wall that needed to be replaced. Now the council had reached out, and made sure that that was done as it was not seen through maintenance that there needed to be an upgrade and a repair of the existing retaining wall. All Victorian retaining wall that was built since the 1800s was replaced with a solid brick unreinforced retaining wall. Now what appears to be the lack of drainage behind it and the fact that we had the buildup of rain, we can see a similar problem to what we had in Mumbai where the water was built up behind it, the drainage was not sufficient to get rid of the water, leading to the retaining walls to be overloaded, causing it to crash into the backyards of the residents beneath it. So it's not even just old retaining walls that have this problem, but even new ones can have the same problem too if they're not correctly maintained or put together. 
that this retaining wall was less than 17 years old before it had the failure. And being on private land, whose fault is it really and who needs to pay? But the cost to repair it would be significantly more than the cost to actually build it. That would be much cheaper if it was done correctly in the first place. Now, a lot of times now, they're actually changing the way that you do retaining walls because of this problem, because drainage can be easily blocked, that you'll design the retaining wall as a tanked retaining wall, meaning that it can withstand the pressures of the soil behind it. But this comes at a significant cost. As you can think about it, if you have all this additional load that you need to resist, it means that retaining wall needs to be substantially bigger, but it's also substantially safer. But every one of these had similar DNA. So I've got a link to a video here that will give you a more in-depth detail about the different types of retaining walls that you can have in your building. And if you're interested in deploying the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, hope you keep learning and I hope to see you next time.